Let's take a look at HTTPS next. 1994, we have an engineer at Netscape building HTTPS SSL 1.0 for the first time. By the way, Scott, do you know the certificate authority system that was built back in 94? Was that a mature piece of engineering well thought out? How was the certificate authority system made in 94? Yeah, exactly. The engineer who built TLS, or HTTPS, was interviewed by Moxie Marlin Spike at Black Hat a couple years ago. And, and the engineer was like, oh yeah, certificate authority system, I forgot about that. Yeah, we kind of slapped it in at the end. I mean, the public key needs to, be ver needs to be, have integrity. We just kind of did a little hand wave and slapped it in at the end. And, that's, and now, like, that's how we do TLS many years later. So... This is a real crappy protocol. Like almost every mistake that could have been made was made. And it was kind of like, eh, put together in a half-ass way. 1999, we see the first real mature version of HTTPS released. That's TLS 1.0. This was amazing when it came out back in 99. And today, it's a weakness. It's a broken protocol. Let's keep going. 2006 and 2008, we see TLS 1.1 also broken. And in 2008, TLS 1.2 shows up. This is robust. What's the problem with TLS 1.2 in this era, though? The problem is... It's too complicated. There's too many ways to configure it, and it's very easy to misconfigure TLS 1.2, even though it's decent, right? It's still a little problematic. 2009, a famous security researcher, Ivan Ristik, releases SSL Labs. And to this day, SSL Labs is the de facto standard around how to analyze a website for TLS. Amazing researcher. Why this was important is, all of a sudden, we all have visibility into any website instantly to see how well their TLS was configured. I am an internet troll. I worked hard to be the troll that I am today. So I grabbed the SSL URL for every single security company in our industry and put the grade and began tweeting this out. And I remember Sigital at the time, one of the biggest security companies in our industry, they had an F. And the executives of Sigital start tweeting at me, oh, man, it goes wrong. He doesn't understand this. And they went after me hardcore. And I'm, I'm like, oh, this is drama. I love it. Ivan jumps in. After this huge thread, Ivan jumps in and says, hey, Sigital, I have a suggestion. Instead of hammering on Mr. Manico, how about you go fix your server? And they shut up real quick. So this, this is this. Now we get visibility into the whole world of TLS. 2010, Chrome begins to preload strict transport security in their browser for Chrome properties. It's impossible to visit Google properties over HTTP in their browser because of this enforcement. And then we get Fire Sheep in 2011. So. So we're, we're, hello, Fire Sheep. What are you doing? The sheep wants to stay. That's okay. Around this era, we get Fire Sheep. Fire Sheep is important because it's an easy plugin on a Mac, and I can immediately hijack HTTP sessions on a public network. This was amazing. I just go to the coffee shop, run Fire Sheep. My friends would log into Facebook, and I go hijack with their permission, ethically, of course, Scott. <laughs> you know, ethically, of course. So, so uh, 2013. This is when TLS is live in all major browsers. 2015, we get Let's Encrypt, a free certificate authority. I hate the certificate authority industry. So much bullshit, it's horrible. So Let's Encrypt is this open, like, is this nonprofit um, group that really changed the game and helped accelerate the use of HTTPS around the world. By 2016, half of the web is HTTPS. By 2017, we see cert certificate, uh, a CAA. And 2018, we see the publication of TLS 1.3. Why is TLS 1.3 so important in history here? Because for the first time, we see a protocol that has very little configuration. There's not a lot of ways to roll out TLS 1.3. They actually removed a lot of the protocol to make it simple and strong by default. And now today, in 2022, 95% of pages loaded by Chrome is TLS. That is amazing change in a very short amount of time. And now we have TLS 1.3 everywhere. 
Scott Helm is in the audience here. He's one of the world's most renowned experts and educators on, on HTTPS. I mean that sincerely. I've been watching your career for a decade, Scott. You're fantastic. I'm a big fan. Come on, come up here for a sec. Come on. Up here. Quick, I, I, got, I got a talk to do. Let's, let, I got a talk to do. I got a talk to do right there. Yeah, TLS 1.3. Thank you. Let's get one with the audience. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, audience. audience, audience. Get down, get down, get down, Scott. Come on, come on. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Scott, I've been watching your career for a decade. The work you do in TLS is outstanding. Keep up the good work, sir. I'm, I'm impressed. So again, the web is TLS. In a matter of years, HTTP will no longer be part of the web. With, within a matter of like five years is my guess. We have come so far. We started with a Netscape engineer in 94 going, yeah, I got to do the authority system in a hand way they made it with this broken protocol. And today, we have an ultra robust TLS 1.3 that's everywhere. This is SSL Labs. You can evaluate your site.